join kids hat family Whoa, that was odd, wasn't it, Tia? Yes, it reminds me of Henry, the ghost of the Warren family house. Oh, uh, what is Henry's story? Once upon a time, There lived a beautiful family of the Warrens. Jim and Alice and their two children, Penny and Rick. They had just moved into the new house. Penny and Rick loved the new house. Look, Rick, I can see till the lake from my bedroom window. That's awesome, Penny. Come and see from my window. I can see our garden. I am glad you love your rooms, children. Maybe you can tie a swing for them on the large tree, Jim. The children were excited by the mom's suggestion. They quickly went to the garden. and helped their dad tie the swing for them Later they came back into the house had a lovely supper and everybody went to sleep It must have been a few hours into the night when Rick was awakened by a noise in the garden He looked out of the window. It was the swing and someone was on it. Who is there? Hearing the sound, whoever was on the swing quickly got off and ran away. Rick also went back into his bed and fell asleep. The next morning, the Warrens gathered for breakfast. I saw someone on the swing last night. I couldn't see clearly in the dark, but it was someone shot. What? That's not possible, honey. I'm sure it was the wind playing tricks with you. Oh, mother, it is possible. I did see someone last night. The day wore on and everybody forgot about the person on the swing. Rick and Penny were playing in their room. When Penny called, "Hey Rick, look, there's someone on the lake." But there was no one that Rick could see. The next morning, the children told their parents about what they saw on the lake. And their parents dismissed their fears yet again. A few days passed. The children kept seeing odd shapes. and their parents kept refusing them one day penny found that her maths homework book was missing soon rick found that his favorite cricket bat was missing but mom dad You have to believe us. The grown-ups were about to disagree with Rick and Penny again 
when suddenly Mrs. Warren's two walk came flying at them. Everybody ducked. Looks like the children were right. There is a ghost in this house. Yes, there is. We must figure out what the ghost wants. And so everybody decided to talk to the ghost. They waited in Penny's room at night, hoping that the ghost will come to take more of her books. And right as they were, the ghost came and went to Penny's desk. Hello, Mr. Ghost. Oh, hello there. Everybody was shocked. The ghost was no more than a boy. How can we help you? Help me? Really? Yes, we would love to. That would be nice. I am stuck here like a ghost because I died before my last wish was not fulfilled. Really? Tell us please, how can we help? My name is Henry. I was a very good student and I loved math. In the last week of my life I had written a maths exam. I knew I would top the class, but before the teacher could declare my results, I died. I want to make my mother proud of me. I wish the teacher would check my test paper and she still keeps in her desk and tells my mother the score. As Jim and Alice watched Henry's ghost go out of the window, they decided to help him out. The next morning they inquired about Henry's school and teacher. Once they had found her, they went to her and requested her to please check his paper. Just as Henry had said, he scored the highest in class. Next, we must find Henry's mother. Let us talk to the principal. And so the Warrens got Henry's mother's address from the principal. They set off towards this address. They found Henry's mom and explained their case to her. Is my Henry all right? Yes, ma'am. And he loves doing math. And he wanted you to have this. My son Henry, he stood fast in class again. I am so happy. Suddenly, Henry appeared in front of her mother. Mother, I am so happy to see you. I kept my promise, Mom. I came first in class. All I wanted was for you to know that I came first. I feel free to go now. Henry, my son, I will always be proud of you. Jim, Alice, Rick and Penny. I will never forget this. Thank you so, so much. As everyone watched, Henry turned into a bright light and vanished. The Warrens returned to their home never to be disturbed by any ghosts again. Wow, dear! I never knew 
that there can be some good ghosts too. Well, Tofu, like there are good people and bad people in this world, there are good and bad ghosts too. You know, I have decided what I want to become for Halloween this week. Let me guess. Henry? Absolutely. How did you know, Tia? I just did. Now come on, let's go home before the cold wind comes back. long to read. Can you please tell me some interesting story? Why not, Tofu? Let me tell you a story about a princess and a bad fairy. A long time ago, there lived a king and a queen. They wished for a child for a very long time. After a long, long wait, their wish came true. A beautiful girl was born to the king and queen. We are blessed with a baby princess and her name is Sunshine. Hooray! said the people. As the baby girl turned one, celebrations began all around. A big party had to be planned. We must invite all the fairies. Yes, we must call them all. But not the black fairy. She is mean. She is bad. The party was a lot of fun. The baby princess looked lovely. All fairies brought with them some precious gifts and blessed the little princess to be a clever and kind girl. Suddenly, the castle was filled with blue smoke and nobody could see anything. As soon as the blue smoke settled, King and Queen were shocked to see the Black Fairy. She saw that a beautiful celebration was organized and everyone from the kingdom was invited for the feast, including all fairies. She became very angry for not being invited and that's why she cursed the baby princess. On your 16th birthday, before the sun sets, you'll prick on a spindle and die. She screamed in anger and vanished. Everybody was shocked. Suddenly, a young fairy, who had not yet given her blessings to the little princess, said, I can't take away the black fairy's curse, but I'll definitely try to help. When the princess pricks herself, she won't die. Instead, she'll go into a deep sleep. 
and shall only awaken with a kiss from a prince who loves her. After this, the king ordered to destroy all spindles and needles from the kingdom. Soon, there were no sharp things in the castle. Except for one, they didn't check in the tower. As years passed by, the baby grew under supervision of fairies and turned out to be a very beautiful young girl. When she turned 16, while roaming in the castle one day, she saw a magical light ball. and followed the light ball. Which took her to the top of the tower in the castle. Inside, there was an old woman bent over a spinning wheel. Come here. You must try spinning this wheel. Oh, what is this? Please let me do it as well. I have never tried this. But the minute she touched the needle of the spindle, she fell to the ground. Blackberry's curse had come true. Old woman, who was actually the Black Fairy, laughed and laughed and then disappeared. The king who remembered the words of the last fairy made her daughter, the princess, to lie in a room for many years to come. Fairies saw the princess sleeping and everyone thought that she was extremely beautiful. They all said at once, Sleeping Beauty! Soon, this name became popular in town and everyone started to mention princess as the Sleeping Beauty. The whole kingdom was sad. Fairies noticed this and decided, let the whole kingdom fall asleep. So when the princess wakes up by her prince, she wouldn't be alone. Everyone in the kingdom fell asleep. The king, the queen, the servants, soldiers, everyone in town fell asleep. Even all the animals fell asleep. Everything in the kingdom stopped. Soon, a thick forest grew around the castle and hid it. About hundreds of years later, a handsome prince was riding through the forest. He saw the strange looking castle. The accompanying soldiers told the prince that this is the castle of the Sleeping Beauty. He had heard stories of Sleeping Beauty and started to explore it. He 
He was surprised to see everybody in the castle sleeping. When he entered more, he saw even the king and queen were sleeping. He looked around and saw one big pink door. He tried to open the door, but it was difficult to open as it was closed for so many years. After trying hard, he managed to open the door and to his surprise, he found Sleeping Beauty lying on a beautiful bed in that room. The moment he saw her, he just fell in love with her. I really want to know who this beautiful girl is. She looks so, so gentle and peaceful, he said. He leaned down and kissed her. Instantly, the kiss lifted the spell and the princess woke up. The king, queen and all the people and animals in the kingdom were awake again. The kingdom was full of joy and there were celebrations all around. The prince and the princess soon got married and lived happily ever after. Wow! It means no matter if bad people think bad for you, there are always some well-wishers to help you out. You know, my friend John stays with his cousins. Yesterday, he came late to the class and the teacher scolded him a lot. John said his cousin brothers made him finish their course before they let him leave for school. He said they always trouble him and make him do a lot of housework. Oh no! He must feel really bad. John is a very nice boy. He doesn't disobey anyone. He is very nice to his cousin brothers despite the way they treat him. That is very nice of him. We should always forgive people for their mistakes. Have you heard the story of Cinderella? Once upon a time, there lived a young girl called Cinderella. Cinderella's mother had died and so her father had married another woman who had two daughters. One day, Cinderella's father went to work and never returned. Cinderella was left at the mercy of her stepmother and two stepsisters who made her do all the work of the house. Cinderella, it's morning already. Where is our breakfast? Just a moment, stepmother. I am just bringing it out. As soon as Cinderella had laid the breakfast, the stepmother and stepsister started eating it. Cinderella served her own plate too and was about to eat when her stepsister 
pushed her own plate away. Yuck! I hate it. Yes, now that you mention it, it really is horrible. Mother, do something. Cinderella, are you trying to kill us? What kind of food is this? But, but stepmother, I have made it the way I always make it. How dare you argue with me? Go and make new breakfast for us. Don't you dare do anything else till we have had our breakfast. And this is what went on in their house every day. The stepmother and stepsisters troubled Cinderella without any reason. But Cinderella loved them still and never ever complained. One day, an announcement was made in the village. Let everybody know, there will be a royal ball at the palace tomorrow night and the king's son, Prince Charming, will marry a maiden from amongst the guests. Everybody from the village is invited. The whole village was excited. Even Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters couldn't stop talking about it in the house. And that is how Cinderella found out about the ball. The royal ball! Prince Charming, the whole village is invited. I will finish my work quickly so we can all go together. Won't it be just wonderful? You! Who said anything about you going? You will stay here and polish our shoes till you can see your face in them. And so with a heavy heart, Cinderella saw her stepmother and stepsisters dress up and leave for the royal ball the next day. Once they had left, she cried bitterly. <laughs> Suddenly, her room lit up. And Cinderella saw the most beautiful fairy she could imagine. She held in her hand a delicate wand. Who are you? Get up, child. I am your fairy godmother. I am here to get you to the royal ball. Really? I never knew I had a fairy godmother. But how will I get to the ball? I don't have anything to wear. You don't worry about that, my child. And so, in just a few minutes, Cinderella was ready for the royal ball. As she thanked her fairy godmother and got aboard the chariot, she received a word of caution from the fairy godmother. Remember to be back home at 12. 
otherwise the spell will wear off. Soon Cinderella arrived at the palace. As she entered the great ballroom, everyone turned to look who this beautiful maiden was. Nobody could recognize her. Not even her own stepmother and stepsisters. Prince Charming walked to her. May I have this dance with you? Yes, Your Highness. And so Cinderella and Prince Charming danced together throughout the evening. Till Cinderella heard the clock strike. Fairy Godmother's words came back to her. She needed to get out of there before the clock struck twelve. Without saying a word, she tore away from the princess's grasp and ran out of the palace. The prince ran after her. Wait, wait! What is wrong? Why are you running? I don't even know your name. But Cinderella dared not wait or even look back. Her beautiful gown was already turning into rags again. Her hair was coming loose from the perfect bun that the fairy godmother had made for her. She didn't even stop when one of the glass slippers came off her foot and fell in the palace driveway. She ran out of the palace gates and vanished into the darkness on a path that led to her home. Once home, she went back to polishing the shoes that had been given to her and decided never to speak to anyone about the ball. A few days later, Two men from the palace showed up at their door. The lady that Prince Charming fell in love with left behind her glass slipper at the royal ball. The prince believes that such a beautiful slipper could fit only his beloved. And so we're asking all the girls in the village to try the slipper. The one whom it fits would be the one the prince will marry. If you have any girls in the house, please ask them to try the slipper. Oh, yes, yes. I am sure it was one of my daughters. The slipper would fit one of them. And so both the stepsisters tried to fit their foot into the slipper one by one. They pushed and pushed but couldn't get their foot in. 
Looks like it wasn't your daughter's after all. Is there any other young lady in the house? No, there isn't. You can leave. As the king's men made ready to leave, suddenly the door of the house was thrown open. And Prince Charming himself stood there. Who is this beautiful girl in the upstairs window? Madam, you have lied to us. I demand that the girl be called forth and try the slipper. Y yes, yes, but she is only a servant girl. Nevertheless, Cinderella, Cinderella, come down here at once. Yes, stepmother. The moment Prince Charming saw Cinderella, he knew he had found his beloved. He took the slipper from the king's man and slipped it on to her foot himself. The slipper fit perfectly in a moment. Cinderella was once again transformed into the beautiful maiden from the night of the ball. Prince Charming took her to the palace with him. He ordered that the stepmother and stepsisters be punished for lying to the king's men and treating Cinderella so badly and rudely. But being the kind-hearted person that she was, Cinderella asked for them to be forgiven. The prince fell in love with her even more for her generosity and they lived happily ever after. Wow, Tia! How wonderful is it to forgive people? Thank you for telling me this story. I will tell it to John too. I'm sure he will like it. Okay, shall we go home now? I think it's getting late. For your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Heart family. Subscribe here.